the, 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 the bottom line is, is that um, they drive our coverage. And, and I see myself as, uh, uh, you know, not necessarily a backseat driver, but someone maybe, uh, if you want to use a different mode of transportation, I'm in the boat, I'm the guy steering it while they're, while they're powering it. And so uh, I, I, I really, when I mentioned that it's a collaborative process, Jake, it really is. Uh, they come on, we, we, use, we use Slack, which a lot of people know what that is. It's an internal communications. Every morning they come on. Uh, and, and say what they think they want to cover, and we will comment saying, "Why don't you do this?" or "Or that sounds good." Uh, once a week, we have we have a a, a Zoom call um, uh, with all of the staff. We have that every Monday. We had it this morning. Um, we do it on Zoom not because of the pandemic, but because we don't have a physical office, and half the states in Reno, half the staffs in Reno, and half is in uh, or Carson City, and half is in Las Vegas, and so we at least like to see each other's faces once a week and talk about stories and other issues. And there's often some vigorous debate on those Zoom calls about what we should be doing, how we should be doing certain things. And what's great about my reporters is they have no fear in telling me when they think I'm wrong and pushing back on it. And I think that I've cultivated that. I'll give myself credit for this part of it, Jake, is that they know that, that that's not insubordination or, 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 or that it will be taken wrong. I, I, I have a lot of faith and respect for, for, for their opinions. And so um, they, they drive the cov coverage pretty much, although in the macro sense, we will talk about, like, for instance, I'll just give everybody a sense of like this morning, uh, we were talking about two major things. One is how we're going to cover any protests because it's not what we do. We're not a breaking news organizations going forward and what other deeper issues about race relations and use of force and those kinds of things in Nevada, we, we can work in the more contextual way. That's what people expect from us as opposed to the latest uh, act of violence on the strip or something like that. And the other thing we're talking about is, of course, all the casinos are opening on Thursday. How are we going to cover that? What kinds of in-depth stories are we going to do uh, on that? And everyone, including uh, myself and my number two, Elizabeth Thompson, are throwing out ideas and, and the reporters. And then we uh, decide w w what's going to be covered. We're still a relatively small staff. I only really have six or eight full-time reporters. And so we can only do so much. But what we do, I always want to say, we want to do better than anybody else. And we want to go deeper. And we, and we want to uh, do it both uh, broader and deeper than anybody else. And that's why, uh, uh, you know, to, to, to quote a, the great philosopher, uh, Clint Eastwood, uh, a man's got to know his limitations. And, and we know our limitations. And we don't try to stretch beyond those. But what we do, I'll put up against anyone else. Do you, uh, do you get any pushback from the broader public about what you cover or don't cover? Um, the short answer is yes. Um, and, and it's frustrating sometimes because a lot of the things people will push back on us about are things I'd want to cover. For mm -hmm. instance, since I covered politics and I was known as a political reporter and pundit and, and, and host of a, a public affairs show for so long, um, people will email me about all kinds of things and say, why, why don't you cover this or what? And most of these things are, are, are local government issues. And I would love to have co more coverage of local government. We just don't have the bandwidth for it yet. It's one of the things, the two things I want to do if we expand right away are not sports and arts and leisure, but covering local government, which I think gets terrible coverage, not because there are terrible reporters, but because most of these news organizations have been gutted and they don't have time to devote uh, to covering all of the local governments, North Las Vegas, Henderson, Sparks, Reno, in the way that they need to be covered. And so we don't do enough on that. We really don't. We, we have dabbled in it a little bit when there are bigger issues at play, like, for instance, marijuana licensing or controversial uh, 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 kinds of stories like that. We'll cover a Reno City Council meeting. Or, uh, but we, we generally have that. Carolyn Goodman goes on national television and says all kinds of idiotic stuff. We are going to cover that because it's about a greater issue uh, than, than, than uh, just, a, you know, the zoning agenda. So um, uh, most of the stuff that I get frustrated about that people want us to cover and we don't get to is local government kinds of things, Jake. And we just, I want to cover it. We will cover it eventually if the plan uh, goes as, as, as I hope it does. But, you know, and we were, 
this was the year we were going to get sustainable and start doing the expansion. And then the pandemic hit and I was lucky to keep the thing alive and uh, uh, knock on whatever's in front of me here. Uh, we're, uh, you know, I, I've managed to do that. It's become a survivability year as opposed to an expansion sustainability year. So more donations is what I'm hearing. More all the okay. time. All right. More. Anybody who's listening wants to donate more donations. Um, what's the future of journalism? Uh, I guess I guess the one word I would use is bleak, but I try not to be uh, depressed about it right? because then you're just paralyzed and, and, sure. and you throw up your arms and you say, why are we doing what we're doing? But I'm worried. Uh, uh, you know, the, the, the for-profit model um, uh, uh, is in big trouble. Um, advertising is drying up. Uh, and, and especially during this pandemic, news organizations are either... Um, uh, cutting their budgets dramatically that were already cut or they're going out of business. Uh, you see what's happened to rural newspapers in this state. It's been horrible, Jake. And we have mm -hmm. partnerships with a lot of those rural newspapers. It's one of the things, again, that I'm very proud of is that these rural newspapers were eager to, to use some of our content. We cover rural Nevada too. We consider ourselves a statewide news organization, but they're gone. Yeah. Most of them are, are, are it's just terrible. And so, and it's going to start happening to larger and larger newspapers. The Cleveland Plain Dealer is out of business, a Jeez. venerable paper. It's just insane. And, and so if, if, if you don't have a, a, a friendly billionaire willing, willing to take over your paper and take the losses that are inevitably going to occur, you're going to have good models where that could work. And then you're going to have models where the billionaire has other interests that might affect how the newspaper operates, and that's not good. Uh, so I'm worried about the for-profit model. I have friends, uh, believe it or not, at the Reno Gazette Journal, at the Las Vegas Review Journal, at the Las Vegas Sun, and you know uh, they have to all be worried. You know the the RGJ has done furloughs. Gannett, uh, which is the parent company, is in big trouble uh, all across the country, uh, and you know. I, it's not as if I want to have a monopoly in Nevada and have the Indy be the only news outlet. That's not good for Nevadans, as good a job as we do. There's a lot more stuff to cover, and I want a robust marketplace of journalism organizations. But that marketplace has become constricted. It's much more difficult to have a thriving news organization now. Digital ads do not pr produce the kind of revenue that, that, that a lot of people thought they were going uh, to produce. But I got to tell you, I don't want to use the word desperation, but one of the things I tried during this pandemic was we thought about doing Google ads for a while uh, to get some revenue, even though I said that one of the things I was proud of is that we don't take advertising, not for ethical reasons, but just the site is so clean. People love that the site is so clean. There's no pop-up ads, no pop-up videos, none of that stuff you get on a lot of sites. But we decided to try a Google ads. And they bothered me and the staff so much after a few weeks, we just said, forget it. Um, it, it. It wasn't making that much money either, although any new revenue stream for a nonprofit organization is helpful. But it just, it, it diminished what we were doing. And, and, and so I, I got rid of it. But um, you see all these news organizations doing all kinds of stuff now that I don't think they would have done uh, in, in, in better times. Um, taking what you what you earlier described, uh, which are known as advertorials, which are unless you look and see the small print that says paid advertisement, they look like news stories. And there there are newspapers, including newspapers in this state, who have decided that they have to do that to remain in business. Uh, I understand the pressures. I'm not going to criticize them for doing that. But I'll never do that. It's just it's never worth that. What? Why did that happen to the long-standing news institutions? Because in my head, and I don't want to push you, wonder, and it's not binary, but it's it seems to be either um, advertiser people who need to advertise your your random business that's selling whatever they're selling is finding it more effective to go onto Facebook and Instagram to generate business, or is it just people aren't interested in news anymore and they're getting their stuff from whoever's typing about his meal review in his bedroom combination uh, probably, but I mean, it's a combination know. of things, but you hit on it. Uh, um, uh, and I guess I'd use the example 
of my son who is 24 years old and who I, I don't know if he's ever read the indie uh that's the kind of kid he is and but you know he'll he'll call me once in a while and say this is terrible this story or this you know i just read about this did you know about this and i ask where i say where did you read that and he will always give the same answer facebook uh, and so there, pe people are, especially younger people, are tuning out of, 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 of the so-called mainstream media and getting their news in other ways. Uh, and, it, and it's changed the news business. Now, I don't know enough about this to present myself as, a, as an authority, uh, but advertising revenue for newspapers is not what it once was. And if you don't have ad revenue and you're a for-profit newspaper, you can't you stay in business. You just, you cannot do it, which is why I said, unless you have a, 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 a benevolent or not so benevolent billionaire uh, who can take the losses, uh, you're, you can't stay in business forever. So maybe the future of journalism is like, I mean, it's, fed, it's funded by the federal government, but it's like public television or public radio where it's like you just do your telethons and people who want it support it, then the, the people who need it pay for it and everybody else just falls away and gets either you know incomplete information or disinformation or brief headlines with two paragraphs of content and maybe maybe that is it which in my estimation is bleak because then you're getting not the full picture which is sad um and people are just getting you know their opinions based on headlines from facebook rather than in-depth commentary and i don't know maybe that's where it goes but either way i would love to see more of these organizations like yours pop up are you seeing them by the way I want to be mindful of time. We're, I want to wrap up and respect your time, but yeah, I mean, uh, listen, this is an important question, Jake. Uh, I went to a, we're, we're members of a couple of nonprofit news organizations, and I've gone to a couple of conferences. Uh, and I, 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 these numbers may be slightly off, but but they're close. A couple of years ago, I went to one, and they're uh, the biggest one, uh, and there were about eighty nonprofit news organizations represented. Last year when I went, I believe the number was 220. So they are proliferating. Most of them are small. Most of them are not Texas Tribune size or even Nevada Independent size, but they're small. A great story is that um, the political reporter for the Review Journal uh, through the 2016 cycle, or maybe it was, God, time so elastic now, 2018 cycle, um, uh, uh, came to me one day, she was working for the RJ, and she said, I love what you're doing at the Independent. I, I think it's the future. I, I, I want to go back to my hometown of San Jose, and I want to do this. I want to do what you're doing, and I want you to help me and, and, and give me some advice. And if you would, because you've been so successful here in Nevada, if we get this done, I want you to come speak at our kickoff. Well, sure enough, she did it. She and her husband left uh, Nevada, moved to San Jose, started up something called the San Jose Spotlight. I did go up there and speak, and they're still in business. I think they're a year and a half old now or so, That's something awesome. like that, but it's really difficult to do. But, you know, they they are making an impact, best I can tell. Uh, I don't follow them super closely, but I try to keep up with what she's, she and her husband are doing, and, they, and we email uh, uh, back and forth. And so I do think they're going to keep um, uh, um, uh, sprouting. But the product has to be the has to be able to sell, right? Whether it's for profit or not, you have to get people to donate. You know, you can't just uh, start up a website and not have content that people need or think they need or want, and 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 make it sustainable. And and uh, uh, I I I really believe that's the future, though. That people do want community based, transparent, in depth journalism they can trust that will say, and you know, no one could have said anything better to me than what you said, which is you're down the line, you're, you're not biased. And, I, and people believe that. Listen, there are people not, what's great about this in a way, although I think it drives my reporters crazy sometimes, is I have a very long paper trail. Uh, <laughs> and there's a lot of video of me saying very opinionated things. I'm an opinionated guy. And I still do on social media to some extent. But you can't go on the site and see my opinions, even if you think you know what they are reflected in the news stories. And my reporters would quit anybody who knows them if I ever said, you've got to report, you got to do this story. And and I, I laugh sometimes at my reporters when they do stories that are one of our major donors might not like. We don't know, as I said, I've never gotten a phone call. 
that my reporters will joke with me, sorry, John, you're going to have to step up the fundraising efforts after this story. And we joke about it because 